now there's a new book, Darwin's Doubt, The Explosive Origin of Animal Life and the Case for Intelligent Design. Stephen Meyer is the author. I hold the book up in my hands right here for those of you watching at Newsmax TV. And uh, we say hello to Stephen. Hi, Steve. How are you, sir? Hey, yeah, great to see you, Steve. Well, We're good to you. <laughs> good, yeah, well, good to talk yeah. to you as well. All right, so, so we know, most of us know what creationism is. Uh, as opposed to Darwinism, tell the folks uh, about intelligent design. Well, intelligent design is the idea that there are certain features of the living world that are best explained by an intelligent cause rather than an undirected process such as natural selection and random mutation. Uh, the Darwinian view has long been that living organisms look as though they were designed for a purpose, but that appearance of design is an illusion because the unguided process of natural selection can explain the appearance away. We argue that, no, that appearance of design is real, and there are particular appearances like the, the digital code that you find in living cells and the circuitry and the information processing systems, all this high-tech and sophisticated uh, machinery, really, that you find inside cells is the product of actual, uh, an actual designing intelligence. All right, so, so you picked this up with, um, with what, part of uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, obviously, and this is about uh, the appearance of animal life that, that happened, uh, as you explain it, uh, very quickly, very rapidly, uh, over 500 million years ago. Exactly. There, this is the doubt that Darwin himself had in the origin of species that he expressed. He was aware that in the fossil record, as you go up the sedimentary layers, there's a particular layer all around the world where the first animals come very abruptly into the fossil record contrary to the, uh, the his own depiction of the history of life as a slow gradual unfolding from simple to complex instead you get these complex animal forms right from the very uh, beginning and uh, back you know in the cambrian period but well, without the, without ancestors that without would have been the, simpler exactly the yeah. ancestral precursors are missing in the fossil record and in the in the book what i do is i tell the story of that doubt that Darwin himself acknowledged, and I so show how it's grown up to, to be illustrative of a, of a major problem in all of evolutionary theory. It's not only the missing fossils, but it's also, in, in essence, an engineering problem. How do you build animals that complex, especially now that we know that to build those animals, you need reams of digital information stored in DNA, as well as other forms of information the Darwinian mechanism does not explain the origin of that information, and increasingly evolutionary biologists themselves acknowledge that insofar as they are also uh, calling for a new theory of evolution, and many evolutionary biologists are furiously working on new theories of evolution because the standard textbook theory, modern so-called neo-Darwinism, does not give a, a, an account of that necessary information to build those animals, and certainly not to build them as quickly as we find them. Uh, arriving well, okay. Well, that being well, that being the case, let me play the skeptic here. Uh, so, wouldn't that argue uh, in favor of creationism? And what you're telling me is that in order to combat that, possibly there, the, the the people you alluded to, the scientists and whatnot, are are feverishly working to to create some other theory that uh, to, to, to try to feed into the Darwin's theory and, and kind of gloss over it or explain it, I should say, not gloss over it, uh, as opposed to considering creationism? Well, uh, creationism is, in a sense, a little bit of a separate issue. The uh, case I make for intelligent design is very much a departure from the standard materialistic Darwinian view. It, and the, the way the case for intelligent design is made is based on two things. One, the observation of these features in uh, living systems. The, there's uh, intricate circuitry and digital code that is necessary to build these animals. And what we know from experience, uniform and repeated experience, the basis of all scientific reasoning is that code and information processing systems and circuitry arise from one and only one type of cause, and that cause is intelligence. So we can infer from the presence of those distinctive uh, features of intelligent activity back to intelligent activity in the past. Now, creationism is more of a, an interpretation of the Genesis text. Right. And, and uh, so, so there are, are creationists who believe in intelligent design, but you can infer intelligent design without starting from a religious basis. And that's, and that's what we're doing. We start from the scientific uh, evidence and make that inference. And, and uh, how has this been received? 
Well, uh, the, the case for intelligent design is obviously very controversial. The, the reviews of the book so far on Amazon uh, exhibit what scientists call a bimodal distribution. There are uh, only, uh, only, uh, only a, a book of this nature reviewed by scientists could explain the reviews as in that manner. <laughs> well, you've got the five stars of people that love it and the one stars of people that hate it. That, and the, that, one, yeah. the interesting thing, though, about the one stars is that they were all posted in the first few hours of the book's uh, release, and it's a 400-page book. I was going to say, you know, wow, well, the, the Evelyn Wood uh, course yeah, came in handy. We got a lot of speed reading going on, <laughs> and, uh, and a, lot of, a lot of personal animus and bile and ad hominem attack, that kind of thing. So anyway, but I would say the, case, the, the interest in intelligent design is growing uh, worldwide. I've just returned from uh, two different conferences in Europe. Uh, there's a new peer-reviewed journal devoted to exploring the case for intelligent design called Biocomplexity. The editorial board is a very prestigious group of scientists, international groups, some members of national academies in their own, in their own countries. So I think this is, this is an argument that isn't going away, and I, I think the kinds of things that we're discovering in life were completely uh, unanticipated in Darwin's day, uh, the, the code, the circuitry, and, 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 and the whole pattern of appearance in the fossil record well, is not it, what he expected. It's very interesting. Uh, that's, that's, that's for sure. And a, a very uh, interesting book, Darwin's Doubt, uh, The Explosive Origin of Animal Life and the Case for Intelligent Design. Stephen Mayer, M-E-Y-E-R. Uh, Stephen, thank you, sir. Very interesting.